Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we will show you the quickest way we've found to concept up characters. We will be starting off using DAS Studio. There are some real advantages to using DAS when it comes to characters. What I use DAS for is really as a the ultimate base mesh tool. Here you can see we're starting off with a base mesh and I can change the muscularity of him. I can change how emaciated it is. Now I can also pose him up a little bit, which is really useful. It means that you don't have to start with some generic base mesh in ZBrush where you have to pose him up using transpose lines. You can actually start using a real rig, which just speeds up your workflow so much. I think the benefit for me with all of this is the fact that I no longer have to create separate poly groups and make sure my masking is good, feather the mask properly, and then also readjust, you know, limbs and whatever afterwards because it doesn't respect compression and expansion when you do it in ZBrush, whereas everything here is properly rigged. And you have facial expressions as well. Just opening the mouth on a base mesh is really tricky. Then we are using um, GoC to bring this into ZBrush. And the advantage of DAS is really that it doesn't take that much time. We're not really going to be using DAS a whole lot in this video. We're going to be using a bit at the end and at the beginning. But the real advantage is that we get up to this result so quickly. If you were to start off with a generic base mesh, now, first of all, you have to post it up and you would have to change how muscular he is and, and all of that. But at this point, we can just get started because we've already done a fair few of the decisions. So this is already, uh, compared to using a base mesh, shaved off quite a lot of time. I think one of the cool things about this kind, kind of workflow is that normally when we do tutorials and when no, most people do tutorials, right, they start from absolute scratch. You see, like if it's a sculpting tutorial, they'll start from a sphere. But in a production environment, that's never the case. Maybe if you do some basic concept digging in the beginning of a production, but then maybe you work for Weta or whatever, and then it gets sent off to another company to finish it. But this is this is how we work. You know, we use a base mesh. Uh, sometimes we have a, a simple rig to help us get it into pose as well. But this is pretty much the, the standard workflow, base meshes that are suited to what we need. And then we just bring it back into ZBrush and start sculpting. Now, the advantage here is that we can keep going back and forth between DAS and ZBrush. So any adjustments we need to make to the pose, the facial expression, we can do that even after we start sculpting. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly powerful using this workflow. This is something we've been talking about in some of our some of our other videos where it depends what you want to get out of the sculpt. If you want to learn how to sculpt from scratch, you should start with a sphere because it's so much harder to do that. And you really have to think more about the fundamentals of it, meaning the shape language and all that. But once you reach a point where you don't really care about that anymore, meaning you already you already know how to sculpt and you don't have to prove to anyone they know how to sculpt, you are now being paid to make cool designs, which is really the job of a concept artist, then you just have to get there as soon as possible. There is no bonus points from doing this from scratch. <laughs> no. It's only going to take much longer. There's definitely a learning experience and, and being able to do everything from scratch, right? You, That's a way to test your, your fundamental knowledge of, of sculpting and, and character creation. But when it comes to getting paid, you know, the client doesn't really care that you did it from a sphere uh, and or whether you did it from a base mesh, they just want the result as fast as possible. And I think that's where DAS really shines is that it can help you get up to that 60, 70% really, really fast. And then you finish it off in, in ZBrush. Yeah, like if, if I were to do this from a sphere as an exercise, I could definitely get to the same result, but it would probably take me about a whole week of working on that. And one of the reasons is stuff like fingers and toes and <laughs> yeah. they take up an insane amount of time even making like the teeth and the tongue and the ear and all that that's something you were getting for free if you were using a base like this and then particularly if you want to iterate on top meaning you want to change some things like the pose or some general proportions that's just much much harder to do and now we have perfectly workable topology. The topology here is, is actually really solid. And um, the textures which comes along with it as well is also really solid, which means that you can use it as a base. 
Now, if I were to take this as a, or make this into a full production character at the end, you would definitely have to, we topologize it at the end because we're doing a lot of stretching and all that. And you would have to retexture it. You would have to split it up into multiple UDIMs and all that. But it means that you have one hell of a base to get started with. Mm. Yeah, and I think when it comes to DAS, you know, there's, what we used here was, uh, it was like a mix or yeah, it was a mix between uh, between like a, a character we uh, we got from from Lass and one of their generic ones which ships along with it. And you know, there's there's definitely something to be said. I mean, you can you can jump into Daz with the free tools and and the free base mesh and just get started. And that's I mean, probably that's it's gonna work for like ninety five percent of your cases. Uh, but if you wanted to do something more specific, there's always more dance characters that you can that you can find, and then you can start mixing and matching those to get even more unique results. Just just for concepting, even where you're not sure exactly the type of character that you're going for, I think Dask can also help speed up that part. Yeah, and it's not about limiting you to to the characters. It's more they would serve as a starting point because this character here would look identical if I were to start with the most generic base mesh or with a sphere or anything like that. It just means that right now we're probably like uh, around an hour or forty five minutes into the actual sculpt, and the face at least at least reads what uh, what you wanted to read. Then we're taking it quickly into Blender and we were making some kind of uh, skirt for our <laughs> nice little White Walker character. And this is also a really powerful workflow where you, you can make exactly what you want and uh, use all the different software you want. We are only using DAS here as a, as a starting point. This is an anti-demonetization uh, piece of cloth <laughs> right there. <laughs> exactly. Blender is also really powerful for this. Uh, just block something out quickly then take it into ZBrush and just keep on working with it. It's not the cleanest sculpt in the world or cleanest piece there, but it works. I think it's important to also note, this is something that Henning and I have been talking about a lot. You know, if you told us a couple of years ago that now we would be working with Daz and Blender, we would have been like, no, no, that's, <laughs> that's not, that's not going to happen. But, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep up with the times and Daz is sort of, it's a weird software. DAS has flown under the radar, especially of professionals, for so many years. And I think it's it's partly because it's had like an image problem, but also because it it hasn't really, I don't know, it's never really appealed that much to the professional market because there's so much focus on building everything from scratch, right? The same thing with Blender. Blender was so obscure a and couple so of years ago. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, and, and then they made a lot of improvements. The same thing with DAS. Now they have all their bridges that go into Maya, uh, Unreal, ZBrush. So the tools have just become really solid and actually useful for professionals. And that's why we started using them. Yeah, this just means that I can get up to a certain level much, much faster. Uh, same as you saw uh, in the very beginning of the video as well, where you see the final presentation. That's just the whole thing just decimated and just thrown into Blender as well, just for some quick rendering. Uh, just use whatever tools are are available for you. It's also really cool with with this suite here. The only paid software in this entire video is actually ZBrush. Uh, all the DAS is free, Blender is free, so it means you can really quickly get up to a certain level without really paying too much. I mean, all the sculpting you can even do in uh, in Blender as well if you really want to. Mm, yeah, that's true. I mean, my hope is really that people start to think about these tools for what they can actually be used for, not necessarily what they have been used for. You know, we we made fun a lot of Blender in the beginning. <laughs> we did not. <laughs> but it was it was kind of shitty. You know, there was a reason we didn't use it. They improved the tools, the tools became increasingly more awesome to use, and then we started using them. And the same thing with DAS, you know, it's it's DAS has been on it's a long journey. It's like 20 years old, yeah, I think. Years and I remember Daz when I first got into 3D. It was like, oh, Daz, okay, some characters you have to pose or something. Yeah, whatever. I'll just not use that. Um, but nowadays, man, it's getting it's getting really powerful. One of my I, I love the fact that you can combine different base meshes with their Genesis 8 figures, where they're all compatible with each other. Like we mentioned earlier, where you can really quickly concept something up, whether it's something creature-like, because they also have that creature library or if it's more human-based. Um, it really just, you know, it's just another tool in your tool bag that can signi significantly speed up your workflow. 
well, with all that said, we, of course, you have to be able to learn how to sculpt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we're <laughs> focusing on here as well. Like this is, this entire thing is, is really a manual sculpt. There is a generic base mesh, but you could turn that base mesh into literally anything. Now yeah. we are turning them into a white walker, but uh, you could turn this into anything. And <laughs> you very much still need proper sculpting fundamentals for all this but even when you have all the proper sculpting fundamentals what's hard for me when i'm sculpting is still getting the base shape down just getting the general proportions that that will always just be a challenge and then doing like all the stuff on top here like all the weird patterning and all that that that's really the easy part that it looks fancy but that is literally just labor you're just going over it and going over the muscles and just adding some weird striation using the damn standard and the clay billet brush. It's nothing really fancy here. All, all the fanciness, all the, everything that makes the model look good is really the main proportions. And they really haven't changed that much from the beginning, which is also the main point of where we made the base mesh, that it wasn't like a crazy muscular base we used. We deliberately made it emaciated and slightly muscular at the same time. So he looks like somebody with a low body fat percentage, but also still quite muscular. Yeah, I mean, I've worked with professional artists that for the life of them, they wouldn't be able to create this character from scratch. Like they just wouldn't. They didn't have the eye for they were these were professional sculptors and, and, and character modelers. But as soon as you give them a base mesh, you give them some guidance, then they're able to create this. So, you know, it's not an excuse. If you can't do this, uh, you still I would always advocate for, you know, having a solid skill set in the beginning and then starting to jump onto this but it just means that if you are further ahead you're more intermediate you you've got the sculpting fundamentals down this is just going to speed up your workflow yeah it really boils down to if you want good results yeah yeah then then you should do this if you want to learn how to do it then if you're if you're in the learning mode purely in the learning mode you're not creating a portfolio then uh, then you need to just focus on on getting good but once you are at that point where you're actually making your portfolio then just go ahead i don't really see a whole advantage a whole lot of advantage to keeping your characters in your portfolio all sculpted from sears uh, that's like morton was saying in the beginning this is how you actually work professionally get used to working professionally if you're if you're showing a character like this uh, like a, like the white walker here in your portfolio and you're like yeah, this took me three weeks to do but, but why did it take you yeah. so long? <laughs> we, we need to actually be efficient here. We need to know that you can actually work using like, not even like cheats, but not, not even shortcuts, just the way it's done. Yeah, and I think that's what we alluded to in the beginning of this video as well. I think it's kind of a misunderstanding of a lot of tutorials that sometimes the workflow that is shown isn't actually that helpful. I mean, it's helpful if you want to start from scratch, but it's not actually very indicative of what it's like to be a working professional. No, particularly not for concepting. No, no, not like, at all. If you were to be a concept artist for this, I wouldn't even take the character up this far. Now, what's really cool about this is that now we have sculpted them up to a pretty decent level, and now we can change the pose directly in, in DAS itself. And this is what I mean by DAS kind of being like an ultimate base mesh tool. Now, I, now, right now we can change the pose of the hands, we can make him, uh, make it into a fist or make the fingers go uh, splay out. We can also uh, control the pose qu with quite a lot of detail here. This is a this is a full full body rig and a full face rig. This is not some kind of uh, cheap discount rig. This is as good as the rigs I've been working with in VFX. It has corrective shapes. It has all sorts of features. So you can basically turn it into whatever you want. You can also see I'm using the GUI but um, on the left here, but you can also just drag around on the character directly without really ever having to use a single controller. So it's very intuitive. Then once you're done with your posing, you can just bring this directly back into ZBrush using the Go ZBrush. Like this would be an absolute nightmare to do in ZBrush, just, <laughs> yeah. just coming up with the ideas. Like posing in ZBrush is, it is just painful. You posing in ZBrush is like you commit to the pose. Yeah, you you can't play around with it. Even if you were to make your own rig using C spheres, which is probably the most intuitive way, it's not a it's not a rig. <laughs> and now we we brought the model back into uh, into ZBrush, and now you can see the new poses there. And the only thing you have to do now is you can you just have to uh, fit the other parts like the hair and the skirt. And I want to change the pose a little bit back again, and then we just bring it back in. And uh, there you go. Now you have 
iterated on the pose because I didn't I realized it didn't work so well in, uh, in, in certain angles. So it really like one of the main advantages is really what we were doing now. It is you are able to bring something back and forth between a post version and a, a non-post version. You can update the posing. That is is really tricky to do that. It is like what Morton was saying before, where if you post something in ZBrush, it does not respect this compression and stretching of something. So it's so easy to just break the volumes of your model when you do anything posing wise in ZBrush. Now we're just going over and just uh, adding refinement to all the different areas. We're actually sculpting without symmetry now, just to make this a bit more interesting. The cool thing is though, that with posable symmetry enabled, you could pose it asymmetrically and still have symmetrical uh, sculpting. So even if you do something crazy with your character and you don't want to do the double work of sculpting each side uniquely, you know, that's that's also an option. Yeah, it's really the best of both worlds. You could even do this from the beginning where you pose your character in quite an extreme pose in, in DAS or whatever you're using, if you're using a rig, and then you can uh, just pose it up. Like if you're doing some kind of classical sculpture where the pose is so important. And now we're really just doing final tweaks and just going back and forth on the different areas, working up the silhouette a little bit and just working up the different shapes. Just doing a quick render for it and just really looking into the different shapes here. But yeah, that's how, uh, that's one of the most effective ways we know of uh, making characters is using, using DAS along with ZBrush, using the Go ZBrush. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what you think about uh, this workflow in the comments and we'll see you in the next one. See you guys.